Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today I want to talk about structuring your speed and power work in your workouts. So the lesson is you need to put it basically first. You wanna warm up first, like you want your body to be literally warm and you wanna give your, your nervous system time to start being active, right? You want that to, to wake up and be more um, responsive to the signals that you're trying to send. If you, you know, if you just think about sitting down all day and then going to work out, like your, your glutes just don't fire quite as well. And the same is true for speed and power work. Like if my glutes are not firing, I'm not gonna be able to jump as high. It's just clear as that. So when I'm structuring a workout, I need to put, you know, I need to do my thorough warm up first, give it, you know, at least 10 or 15 minutes and make sure you're sweating by the end of it. And, you know, depending on the uh, activity that I'm trying to train here, whether it be jumping or running or whatever you want to do, I need to be gradually ramping up my intensity so that that exercise gradually gets harder and harder and harder. So I'm starting to stress more and more the power development side of this equation. And that's what's gonna give me my power adaptation. That's what's gonna tell my nervous system and my muscles to turn on really quickly, to cycle contractions really quickly so that I can actually move really fast. Now, I wanna pose uh, a possibility. What if, I did eight sets of three on my deadlift at a really heavy weight, at my heaviest, I'm, you know, I'm gradually working up to the heaviest weight that I can do. What if I did that and then I went and I tried to text, or text, I'm not texting anyone. What if I went and tried to test my vertical jump after that? What do you think would happen? Well, some might say that my nervous system is now primed because I've been doing all this heavy stuff and my vertical jump would increase because now my body weight is lighter. That is uh, kind of true, but if you're doing eight sets and you're really stressing out on those last couple sets, then you're gonna have too much fatigue to access maximum power. And it's just simple as that. So if the goal of your program is to train power, to develop power, to, to seek speed and power adaptations, then you don't want to fatigue yourself with strength work before that. Now it's okay to do strength work during power blocks, and not to be confused with the dumbbell, power, uh, you know, section mesocycles of training. It's okay to do strength work, but you wanna do it after that because strength is going to be a little bit less impacted by the speed work. You know, it might even be primed by the speed work because speed work doesn't generally coincide with a lot of fatigue, right? You don't, it, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. So stay tuned, watch that tomorrow. Um, but you're not really building up all of this systemic fatigue where your whole body feels really tired, where you feel like you need a nap afterwards. You're not getting that from power work because you need to be as fresh as possible. So if you're writing some sort of workout or if your goal is to become more powerful and faster, maybe jump higher, maybe throw medicine balls further, maybe throw a baseball harder, then do that speed work at the beginning of your workout.